Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Eric the Old Jarhead here. And today, I wanna to talk about portable solar panels. Now, I'm talking about the folding type solar panels that you can buy with power stations or for power stations. Now, of course, you can use them anywhere, but that's the normal use. And typically, these are bought by people that either have power stations for backup at home or that use them for cabins or camping, overlanding, that sort of thing. And they're becoming very, very popular today. And I wanted to talk about the kind of things that you should look at before buying a portable solar panel. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is the type of connector that that solar panel comes with because they don't all come with standard MC4 connectors. So let's talk about the first solar panel that I bought and why I don't recommend this panel for anybody else. And I'm sorry, Jackery, because it's a Jackery solar panel. Here it is right here. What I wanna point out here is that Jackery sends this panel out with one type of connector. It is essentially a proprietary connector for Jackery. Now, to be honest, you can get adapters. I have one, actually I've got several right here. I've got one right here that I bought for it and a few others. Now, this fits the Jackery, the 550, which is what I bought it for, but that connector doesn't fit all the different applications that you might find yourself wanting to use this solar panel for. Why would you do that? Well, <laughs> let me tell you my little story. After I had that Jackery for about maybe a year, I saw a deal on another little power station that had about the same power as the Jackery, and it was half the price of a Jackery. In fact, today I think they're about $200, and it's the little Go Neo 604. Here's the issue that I had. I bought that power station without thinking about the type of connector that it uses, nor what this Jackery solar panel has, and this connector does not fit on the Go Neo 604. So I had to get this connector that I could then attach to it. I got it off Amazon, and now I can plug that into that little Go Neo. Okay, so that problem solved, fairly simple, right? However, that's all you can do with this. So this solar panel is no good for me to use on several of the other power stations I have. Now the next thing that I would say that you should look at is whether or not the solar panel itself has a charge controller or at the very least has a converter built into it for 12 or five volt stuff. So for example, this Jackery does have a little converter that has USB ports built into it so that I don't have to plug this into anything to charge up a cell phone, for example, or maybe a drone or something. I can plug it directly into this portable solar panel's USB ports and away I go. So that's kind of a convenient feature. It's not something you have to have if you have a power station, but I do find that as a nice feature, something to look for. All right, the next thing that you need to look at is the voltage of the solar panel. Now I would say voltage and amperage, but voltage is very important when it comes to the usability of that solar panel. For example, this solar panel is a 20 volt, five amp solar panel. Power stations typically have a range of voltage on the power station that it can take from a solar panel. For example, the Jackery that I have is limited to 24 volts. This panel works fine for that. However, I've got a 400 watt solar panel right here that's a 40 volt solar panel and it's not gonna work on any of those power stations that can only take up to 24 volts. So. You really wanna pay attention to the maximum voltage of the solar panel. If you buy a 400 watt solar panel with a 40 volt max, you can't use it on those small Jackeries or Go Neos, those kind of things. Or for example, in Agritech, I've got an Agritech power station that it's a great little power station, but it can't take that 40 volts incoming. It just won't work. So voltage is very important. Now earlier I mentioned whether they have an MPPT charge controller built into them. I would suggest that you don't buy those, not unless you can see a use for that charge controller. But there's a couple reasons why I would say don't get one of those. The first is that let's say you've got a power station that can take 800 watts of incoming power and you buy a 400 watt solar panel that has one of those charge controllers built into it, and then decide, well, since 400 watts is only half what I can put in there, maybe I'll get two of them. The problem is you can't run those in parallel in order to get 800 watts going into that power station. 
All right, the next thing that I would say to look at is the weight of those panels. I've got two 400 watt solar panels here, they're foldable solar panels, and one of them is kind of big and bulky and it's actually really heavy and I found it kind of difficult to move around. Then I got a second one that I'm gonna show you today that frankly weighed about half as much. It was way easier to carry around. Now obviously if you're buying a 100 watt panel or a 200 watt panel, they're gonna be very light, but when you start getting into 400 watt foldable solar panels, you might find that the one that you buy is kind of heavy. So I would suggest looking at the weight of those portable solar panels to decide, is that gonna work for you? The other thing that goes right along with that is the one that I have that's very heavy, which I can show you, is also very big. It's taller and wider than the other one I have that has more. The key here is that if I have to put one of these in the back of my Jeep or the back seat of my truck, I don't want a great big bulky heavy foldable solar panel that I'm gonna stick back there. I want something that's easy to get in and out of my vehicle or carry in and out of my house that's gonna fit where wherever I need to put it. So the next thing that I wanna talk about is how these solar panels tilt. Because folks, all portable solar panels that I've seen anyway, come with little legs on them that you can open up so that you can tilt the panel. Now, for example, this Jackery has one that's about a 45 degree angle and it is non-adjustable. So let's talk about connectors and why to me, that's one of the most important things to pay attention to. And to do that, I'm gonna pull up another solar panel and show it to you. Let me put this Jackery away that I can only use on my Jackery and my Go Neo. I can't even put it in series or parallel with something else and connect it up to a different power station. It's almost useless to me unless I'm just using it for the Jackery or the Go Neo. And the Go Neo, again, as I mentioned, I gotta have an adapter for it. So let me move this one off the table. All right, the next panel I'm gonna show you is my Nervi panel, which I've had for a little while. Now this is also a 100 watt solar panel, but there are some differences in this that I wanna point out. And by the way, this video is not sponsored by Nervi or Jackery. It's just something I wanna show you because I think it's important to pay attention to. So, with the Nervi, the first thing that you'll notice is it comes with MC4 type connectors. This to me, folks, is very important. I won't buy a portable solar panel any longer that doesn't have MC4 connectors. Now, Nervi, is pretty good, or nervy, I think they're called. It's pretty good because they do send this nice little pigtail that has MC4s on one end to connect to the solar panel. And then it's got the DIN type connector that can be adapted so it works on the Jackery or the Go Neo. It's got an XT60, and it also has one of these, it's an Anderson type plug that can work on a lot of different power stations as well. So I could plug this into, for example, my Opus Mega One. The XT60 works on an EcoFlow, works on several of my other power stations. But what if I need an XT90? All I gotta do is get an XT90 that will fit MC4s. So I've got one of those, and I can plug this directly into, say, my Afri P210. So that's key here. But the next thing I wanna show you is this support right here. This support is adjustable. I can take this and snap it in down here to get me about 45 degrees. I can adjust it up here to get me about 60 degrees. Well, that's more than 60. And I also have a snap right here that I could connect it up to, like so, that allows me to get way up like this. So that's kind of important because that means that I can take this panel and I can tilt it way back and aim it at the sun better than, for example, I can with one of those with a fixed support, like the Jackery. I don't like those. Now the next panel I wanna show you is my Afri 400 watt panel. Now I've got two 400 watt panels, and this one, is actually the one I like the best. Now these panels run about $500, so they're not inexpensive, but it is a 400 watt panel. This is a portable panel that I can take anywhere I go. Compared to a bigger one that I've got, this one's actually lighter too. The first thing I wanna show you is that this one comes with a rather long MC4 type cable. So really nice that they did this. It's a nice heavy cable and it comes to MC4s. So I can take this and directly plug this in with an XT90 to my Afri P210, for example, which comes with the right connector to go MC4 to XT90 already. 
So I've already got that connector, plug it in here and away you go. It's a very nice feature. This panel also has USB connections built into it, something I mentioned earlier. I like that because let's say you've got this set up, you're charging up your power station, maybe your phone's dying or you're flying a drone or whatever it is you need a USB connection for, maybe some radios or something, you can plug them directly into this solar panel to get them charged back up. That's a very nice feature, I like that. It does have two of the USB-A type connectors and it's got a USB-C as well as a little DIN type plug-in, power plug-in for whatever you might need one for. And I don't have anything that uses those, but it's kind of nice to have that. So it is nice that they put that in here. They also give you all of the information about the panel inside of this pocket. It is IP65 rated. That means it can get wet. It's weather resistant. It's not, you can't submerge the panel, but it is weather resistant. So if it starts to rain, you're not gonna damage it. You can just pick it up and get it out of the rain. This one also has an adjustable support that's actually, look at that, that's 90 degrees. This thing can tilt back really, really well. You can adjust that. Now, a panel like this one's a $500 panel. I think they're on sale for 500 right now. But out of my 400 watt panels, I really prefer this one and I'll show you why. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness, folks. This thing, I forgot how heavy this was. Okay, see if I can lift it up. I've got a bad hand. Oh. oh my goodness. <laughs> this thing weighs a ton. And it seems like a decent panel, but it weighs a ton, folks. Okay, let me, uh, let me move this big sucker. Holy smokes, folks. <laughs> you guys know I got a bad back and bad arm, right? I just had surgery uh, two months ago on my left hand to rebuild it. And uh, carrying that big heavy thing around, no thank you. Whereas this one, I don't know if you noticed, I just picked this up and set it up here. Look at that, one arm, no problem. Now one last comment I would like to make about buying these panels is, you don't have to buy the proprietary panels made by and for that power station. Because you can get adapters from MC4 to just about anything else. Don't be afraid to go out and look at other portable solar panels. So I hope that helps somebody out. I hope you find some solar panels for you. And if I helped you out, hey, do me a favor, hit that like button, drop a comment. I appreciate it, folks. And thanks to all my members for supporting the channel. I really appreciate you doing that. And I'm gonna drop another video right here for you to check out. Hey, folks, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. The old jar hit out.